As an independent artist, I personally believe the best use of your time is reaching out to smaller, user-created, curated playlists that are in the genre that you make. You can find these playlists by going to an artist page and look at the About section and see what playlists they've been featured on. It's best to do this with smaller artists, preferably less than a 1,000, since they tend to respond a bit more. If you start hitting up playlists that have massive pop stars on them, they tend to not respond as well. An example of this would be if you're a 1975 style 80s synth pop band, don't go to 1975's page and hit playlists that use them. Find some smaller band that sounds like the 1975 that have maybe a thousand monthly listeners. Go to their about page, see what playlists they've been featured on and reach out to those playlisters. You can also go to the fans also like page and see what other bands are similar to that band. For the most part, you're going to see a lot more success if you reach to smaller playlists, like 100 to 90 followers, reach out directly to those playlist curators. There are multiple ways you can do this. You can either go to their profile on Spotify and you can email them or Facebook message them. I personally don't like this strategy because Facebook is kind of the worst way to reach out to somebody that you don't know. What I'd prefer you to do is see if you can find that person on Instagram as opposed to Facebook and try to direct message them that way. Before you message this person asking to be put on their playlist, there are some ground rules that we need to establish. One, you should not be spamming people. Do not spam people. You should not be copy and pasting this same message to 500 playlists in an afternoon. Write a small, quick, personalized thing that shows that you actually engage with this playlist and that you're actually a fan of this playlist and that you're not just some musician trying to reach out for relevancy. Show them that you're actually a fan of this playlist. The second thing you should understand is you should not be asking for a favor. You should be trying to provide the solution to a problem. I'm going to strongly recommend people read Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People. He does an entire chapter on how to write letters to people in a way that they respond. But the general idea is if you are talking selfishly and you are only talking about what you want, don't be surprised when that person doesn't respond. Instead of talking about you, you should be talking about them. I've noticed that you have a problem, I have the solution. Frame your music as being the solution for a problem that they might have. People who are constantly curating music on Spotify are constantly needing to update old playlists and take out old music, put in new music. If this person is trying to find new music, you might actually be able to provide them a valuable resource. Three, don't send them your life story. Short copy is always best. And what I mean by copy is don't write out five paragraphs about how this album album means so much to you and it would crush you if it didn't get on a playlist or that like it doesn't matter and the reality is if you send somebody a very large piece of text the first reaction they're going to have is this is a spam people on social media tend to not react well when you send them super long pieces of text try to keep your initial outreach to like less than two lines of whatever social media you're on if you're longer than about 10 words you're probably sending a message that's too long also you should be making this an actual conversation. When I have a conversation with somebody, I don't go up to them and tell them this giant long piece of story about my life. I say, hey man, how you doing? I wait for them to respond. Next thing, I wait for them to respond. It should feel like that. There's nothing that's going to turn someone away faster than this overwhelming expectation of they have to do this thing for you or they have to listen to you. And the fourth thing that you really should know is don't be a dick. They are a stranger. They owe you nothing. If they are not interested in having you on their playlist, you should really respect that. Part of running your band as a business is acting like a business person. If I send a proposal to somebody and they say, actually, I'm sorry, I'm not interested. My response is always going to be, okay, no problem. It's going to be a very formal, oh, that's totally fine. Uh, thank you for your time. And it's going to be genuine. There's nothing good about demanding something from somebody or being bitter if they don't give you what you want. That's what a child does. A way to break the ice really well with these conversations is to be fully transparent about what your intentions are from the very beginning. Tell them, hey, really love your playlist. I'm an artist and I was wondering what your process was for artist submissions slash if you have one. When in doubt, always be polite and courteous. People like it when they are respected.
People like it when they are treated with dignity. The fact that you are reaching out to them and asking them what their terms of service are, it shows that you value them and that you're not just trying to grab something from them. Again, I recommend you do this over Instagram. That tends to have a bit of a better reaction. Also, don't send two messages if they don't respond. If somebody sees your message and they don't respond to it, don't try to get them again. At the very least, that is a no. And again, if they turn you down, simply say, no problem. Thank you for your time.